you're running this thing for the first time, we're going to be watching the UW Cardinal game, or, or UW Madison Cardinal Smite Team versus the um, Colorado State University Smite Team tonight. Um, this is my first time trying to commentate a game, so there might be some technical issues, but hopefully we will get it all worked out pretty fast, so yeah. Um, all right. Right now it is not capturing Smite, so I need to yeah. get that working real quick. Can you see that it is live at least? If it's live, yeah, right. it's live. Right now. That is we can't it. hear you though. You're fine. <laughs> um, capturing. Why is it not capturing right now? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if we can get that. That title changed under the... the <laughs> what is it titled as right now? Uh, Madison vs. RIT. Osu 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 League. League. Well, that is <laughs> tragic. Um, what do you huh, mean? It's awesome. I don't know how I can go about changing that real quick. Um, well, that's unfortunate. Um, I mean, to be fair, we're probably not going to draw any spectators. So just saying. I mean, let me There we go. Did Brendan change it? If so, what a legend. Um, all right. Why am I not seeing the preview? Because it says that it is capturing the game window, but it is it's unfortunately not, not actually showing it to me right now. So. Let me mess around a little bit more and see if I can get that fixed for you guys. Create new, make source visible, and a full stream. All right. To be honest, we are like three of the f seven viewers. <laughs> I mean, hey, don't worry, don't worry. Bren Brennan's at the at the uh, library right now streaming this. <laughs> at the same time, as much as you are correct. Love to have this working because I, <laughs> I don't know saying. what's going on. <laughs> I, I have everything set up the same way I did before, and it is not uh not displaying the game to the uh, says no source selected. It's not capturing it. I don't know why. It doesn't matter how hard you try. Because. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I have it set up the same exact way I did when I was doing the test stream earlier on game capture, capture full screen, any full screen application, smite, digging full screen, it shows up as properties for game capture. Um, maybe it will fix when I... Transition over to Smite page? I don't know. Does OBS, like, link somehow, or...? What do you mean, link? Yeah, what do you mean? It, um, the way like, it does the game it capture is like, I set it up Discord to capture it any full screen app. So... Ideally, when Smite goes full screen, it automatically gets captured and everything works. So That's what happened I have earlier. OBS open on mine, and it says to start streaming, you need the URL and Steam key in the settings. That was Steam not a thing I had to do earlier. Um, okay. hey, is it, is it working? It set up for your. You got picture. Do you guys see it? Do you see the? Oh, it's not quite sized correctly, but. <laughs> All right, I can go through and fix that very easily, though. That, that's it's something about a third I know of the how to do. Missing. I mean, the game is still showing, though, so, like... Yeah, no, I can pick sizing. Sizing is easy. That's just doink, doink, doink. All right, that is all fixed. It should be good. 
let me start streaming to you guys as well, and we should be good to go, I think. Poggers. Alright, yeah. sorry about all that. that I'm sure we'll flash based on the left and right. <laughs> all right. I think so that's naturalist smite, right. though, right? What? Alright, you guys see it? Is everything running correctly? Does it look like? Yeah, it's working. Oh. Yeah, you're done. Alright, apologies for the inconvenience again for anyone joining us. My name is Strike. I'm going to be commentating the UW Cardinal game today against Colorado State University for Smite. Um, this is my first time casting anything, so there were a few technical difficulties, but we got that all sorted out. And today, I am being joined by um, my fellow team members, Spider Rock and Stealthy Spider. Yep. Ah, so the game is going to be starting in a few minutes, and then we'll hop on and spectate it. And See how it goes. I would like to. We're going to try and be unbiased about our commentary of the game state, but we will be favoring UW Madison, obviously, as these are people we both know their play styles and know who they are. But either way, it should be a fun time, so yeah. Yeah, um, definitely. So, going into this game, um, what are you expecting uh, UW Madison to prioritize? Generally in the past we've seen them focus a lot on getting picks for their mid laner uh, collision, and uh, I've also been talking to them about bans a little bit, and right now they're, um, like the main prominent threats this season seem to be the gods Scylla, Kukulain, Giannis, among a few. So do you think there's any role that they're going to prioritize coming in here, or? Do you think this first game is just going to be they're going to ban out the top picks such as Yamoja and the ones I listed before, and then just pick off of that and see how it goes, or what would you guys expect? Um, I would say that they would be doing those kind of god picks. Um, as a solo laner myself, uh, Kukulan is definitely a uh, kind of terror of the lane. Um, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people have been banning out set in some of the competitive ranked games, but I don't exactly know how um, that will translate to the AVGL games that we're going to see here. Um, but yeah, the Janets I know is popular. Scylla is always like pretty pretty scary to face. But we'll see what they do in our banning phase, I guess. If anything beyond that, more relies on teams scouting each other. If they were able to find any VODs or videos anywhere to watch each other play. Indeed. Um, we may see some specific bans, because I do know that prior to this game, UW Madison Cardinal was looking at some of the VODs for um, the Colorado State University, so we might see some target bans coming out, but I would expect this first game will be pretty standard. I'm real quick going to share the link of this Twitch in the general tournament. This is for the Illinois State University Redbird Smite Spring Invitational Tournament. It's a precursor to AVGL that's coming later this year. So all the teams that are competing in this are going to be competing later in AVGL, and it's just going to give a good example of how the teams match up. And right now, I believe this is the third game of this. Uh... Yeah, I believe so. Is this third? This is yeah. the third I know... Right? Um, UW White has had two, and I'm assuming that this is the third for Cardinal as well. <laughs> Much further into the season than I thought we were. The, the, <laughs> this is the third of seven games, if I remember correctly, and after those seven games, the top people from their heat will be um, going into a playoff for a few prizes. So, yeah. Alright, it seems that the match lobby has started up, so we will go and queue to spectate it. And we'll get into this very soon. Yep. And then there will be a slight delay, about three minutes yes. or so, um, as I've been told. Right now we're running off of the Smite Spectator standard delay, which is three minutes instead of adding a, an additional stream delay to it. So hopefully that would prevent any type of stream sniping if such a thing were to occur, but that would be doubtful in the first place. And yeah, let's get into the picks and bans. So it looks like uh, CSU is on the order side for this game, which means they will both be banning first and getting the first pick here. Ban out Yemoja, which is right now the most prominent support lane um, god, and it's a pretty common ban, so I'm not surprised to see that first ban. 
Kukulain coming out from UW Maz and Cardinal, also to be expected. In general, they have stated that if they are not first picking, they would rather not have this on the table to face. Arachne coming out, what do you guys think of this? I have not seen- Ar I, Arachne is powerful with Mannequin Scepter right now in the jungle, but I never really took her as the most powerful jungler. As Spyrox said earlier, Set seems to be a much more prominent meta threat, and to my knowledge, the jungler for UW Cardinal, Fish A, does not play Arachne. Again, there's no expectation that they do or do not know um, what kind of flex gods are owned by UW Cardinal. That's fair. It seems that uh, CSU is putting a priority on banning out some of the top jungle picks. Tsukiyomi's a uh, ban that makes sense. Bumpus Hammer is especially strong on him at the start of the season, giving a one second cooldown after an auto, um, after abilities, which for Tsukiyomi's kit allows him to spam high damage abilities with CC effects very frequently, as well as getting that high impact ult off. Um, more often. The law out from uh, UW Mats and Cardinal also is a very common ban. Uh, Nuwa's ult right now benefits from Arc Mage Gem, which gives at which is a level 20 starter item, which gives plus 50% power to first ability every 20 seconds. So for Nuwa's ultimate, which hits every player on the field of the enemy team, that means that they will be nuked essentially every time that it's up. And for squishies that um, are not building health or defenses, this can be about half health. First pick comes Apollo. Apollo has been a very prominent uh, ADC um, god recently with his ability to traverse over the larger map much easier and um, just high mobility allowing him to be in team fights. And we see Persephone and Guan Yu come out from EW Mass and Cardinal. How do you guys feel about these picks so far? Pretty standard. Persephone's been a powerful mid laner for the last couple seasons, I'd say. Or the last <clears throat> couple months. Uh, Guan Yu making his return again yeah. as a very powerful god. Changa and Sir, pretty typical picks. Uh, Changa, big CCs. Honor all Sir, again, big CC. Cerberus has been a bit less common this season, but against the Guan Yu, if it is a pick that is comfortable for whoever is playing support on CSU's team, it makes sense as it, his Cerberus' passive does allow him to steal some of the healing away from Guan Yu and decrease his overall sustain in team fights. As well as Spyrak was talking about, the high impact bolt that Cerberus has available allows him to have a heavy influence over team fights as well as burn through the beads of UW Madison Cardinal. We also see On Her coming out from Venom. Um, this is a pick which Venom has notoriously performed very well on and is one of his more comfortable god picks. Even though On Her is not necessarily the most meta ADC right now, which would be more so Apollo and Cupid, um, sometimes being on a god that you're just more familiar playing can be better, and it seems he has decided to go that route. Hmm. Here we are seeing um, Cthulhu and a Wheelix being banned out by UW Cardinal. Um, Cthulhu, ever since his release, has been a pretty prominent god for bans. Just large amount of HP, large amount of CC and damage coming out from a very tanky target. Just obnoxious to fight in the solo lane. Um, I'm, it looks like CSU is instead targeting out more supports. Fenrir has been a very good aggressive support. Um, this season, who can also flex into jungle to some effect. And then Jingxian, um, getting banned out, who also has a high impact ult similar to Cerberus, where it can either burn beads or put the opposing team Squishy in a very vulnerable position. So, not surprised by any of these. The only um, ban that I would say strikes me a little off guard is the Awelix ban. Awelix, although being a strong pick, generally benefits a lot from having a lot of knockup presence from the opposing team. Granted, Apollo does have a strong knockup off his both his dash and his ult, so that's probably the line of thinking which UW Cardinal is operating off here. Um, but I... I believe Serve's ult also counts as a knockup. That's targetable. Yeah, by oh, can you pull out of Cerberus' ult? The more you know, yes. then I would say, yeah, they're probably target banning the Wheelix as they don't want to have to worry about um, 
being engaged on by those ultimates, especially Apollo's ultimate, which can be very hard to see coming, and then just getting pulled if they don't have E. Um, yeah. And on her also does have a leap, so that would also be a target for a Willix. Is that ultimate. is also true, yeah. Looking at their own god picks, both Persephone and Han her are exploitable by a Willix, so having that getting rid of, especially if they were planning on going through Cat earlier, makes a lot of sense. As for these last picks, I'm not really surprised to see Ra and Verona. Both are very powerful in their respective lanes. Ra is able to bring healing to his team and set up for uh, large ultimates off of other CCs, which both Cerberus and Apollo, as well as Verona. Actually, all of their team can provide a large CC off their ult, setting up into Ra very nicely. Bologna they may, and Kin Scepter has they, also been They may be strong in their lanes, but uh, having two mages on a team is definitely going to make that jungling role interesting on CSU side. That is also true. I'm assuming that we're going to see a Shanka solo Bologna jungle would be what I'm expecting, but it definitely is a bit of a squishier comp if they do decide to go that way, and Shanka as a jungler I don't think has too much prowess, so I would definitely expect to see a Mannequin Scepter Bologna or a Bumbo's Dagger Bologna coming out here. Um, Apollo Jungle also has been run, but in terms of their team comp, I cannot see that being used. Looking at uh, UW Madison Cardinals picks, they decide to pick up a Ganesh and a Sirket. Both of these uh, gods have pretty high value ultimates that they bring to the table. Ganesh's ultimate being uh, the Dharmic Pillars, which can create a box that essentially traps in enemies unless they want to be slowed or, um, and damaged heavily. It also brings great objective burn to the table. Um, and synergizes very nicely with um, both Sirket and Anho, who are both able to throw people through those set walls. And then Sirket, with her Last Breath ultimate, takes a more support jungle role, who focuses more on setting up for kills for the other high damage members of the team, as well as providing strong anti-heal, which will be valuable against both Shangha and Ra. So, going into this, I would say that most of these picks seem to be at least from what I know of UW Madison Cardinal side, most of these picks tend to be more comfortable for the players. So we're just kind of going to gauging out how CSU responds. And then CSU has a lot of meta picks. The one thing, as Firerock mentioned earlier, to keep a note of is that they do not have a conventional jungler. So we'll be interested to see who goes there. Any other uh, thoughts? Um, not really anything from me. Um... Not particularly. Um, right now, we are just waiting on the three minutes of in-game time to pass so that we can begin spectating. That yep. we are. In terms of in-lane matchups, um, do you think there should be any particular lane to look at? I'm thinking that from uh, Ganesh on her lane, we might see a good amount of pressure. Both Ganesh on her and Cerberus Apollo are rather aggressive lanes. So I feel like we might see some early action from the duo side of the map. Um, Sir Ketch generally doesn't like fighting as much until she gets her ult up, um, because then she can actually support into kills and shut down other gods, as well as force speeds. But she does have that taunt available at level 2, which can be extremely valuable. So we might see something coming out of mid lane. For the Guan Yu Shangha matchup, I believe that Guan Yu should have an advantage towards the start of the game, just being able to outclear and outbox the Shangha. But later into the game, the Shangha's um, sustain will come online. So we will see how that plays out in the teamfight. And it looks like we are getting into the match now. All right. Yep. And everyone's loading in slowly. And here we are. All right. So, in terms of here, let me real quick rearrange this. Especially with this uh, being the first real tournament since uh, Season 8 dropped, this is going to be an interesting sight to see which uh, starting items are picked. For sure. Yeah. The ones that I'm most interested to see which path they go is going to be the Bologna as well as the um, Shanghai. I'm interested to see what starts they go. Bologna goes... Warrior's Axe, which to me implies that it's going to be a solo laner. It looks like we're going to have a raw jungle here. And a, pop, a Shangha mid, just going by their starter item choices. Bumba's back yeah. is traditionally a jungler item, so... 
might be seeing that coming out. What are your guys' thoughts on the latch? Raw jungle is definitely going to be an odd sight to see, but it is nice that uh, whether it was Ra or Changa jungle, they do have heals for their team, whichever lane they do decide to rotate to. Yeah. The Ross definitely still offers many of the same elements to his team as he does in mid lane, um, being his strong burst damage as well as his heal. However, it's interesting to me because Ra generally struggles more in terms of being able to quickly clear camps. I guess it does make sense since his passive gives him a large amount of movement speed that he can rotate across the map very quickly to um, a large effect. But at the same time, it still strikes me a little off to see this pick instead of something else. But um, it looks really like standard starts from both sides. So. Changa also has a... Uh... Movement speed, passive, so whether yeah. which one it was, they really set it up for that way. Indeed. So, either way, they were set up to go. Um, I don't know if there's a way to use remove the right elements yet in Season 8. If someone could check that really quick, that would be nice. I know when Season 7 that it used to be O could remove like trees and stuff from blocking view. I don't know if that is still the um, case. Um, oh, it doesn't seem to do that, it just seems to remove lane clips. You see, early engagement on the Ra, put down to half health quickly by the Secret with both the Deathbane as well as the Claw, the Cobra's Kiss. And that should give mid lane access to these um, right side minions very early on, which is great for getting an XP lead. We should see CSU trading the left side um, mid camp creeps that, but they didn't clear the way fast enough, they might not be able to actually. So that's an early XP advantage for the mid lane. If we go over to the duo lane on the other hand, we see that right now um, UW Madison Cardinal has a fair amount of pressure with the serve at half health and pushing into tower line. Um, Anhur is at very low mana though, but for I, I believe that was an impale on the Apollo, pushing him back out of main wave range. Indeed. It seems that they decided to take the more passive reset towards the middle lane instead of still being pushing up here. So it's an interesting thought. If we look back towards mid lane again, we see that Sirket is still lurking here, trying to take advantage of the Shang Ha being low while Ra is soloing oracles. Let's see, where will Ra be looking next? He might just go to back camps or just secure Red here. Either way, four star. Um, it seems that we aren't going to be seeing any early first bloods this game. Pretty standard start from both teams in terms of camps as well as just rotations. Nothing but slight XP leads here. It's still pretty thin. Yeah, I would say um, if you go into the solo lane, looks like there's some early pressure with Guan. I saw that Bologna's health was a little low earlier on. Um, you are correct. Like... Guan, you getting away with bashing in on um, the Bologna, as well as just keep him low, should give early totem pressure, providing mana for the rest of the team early on, and maybe setting up for a potential blue buff invade earlier. Right now, we're just seeing they're securing their own blue buff instead of taking the more aggressive approach, which I would say is probably a respectful call. Um, if we go back over to uh, Duo Lane, Anhub is getting aggressed on both low health and low mana right now. He might be due for a pack very soon, as the Ganesh had backed earlier, um, leaving him on his own. Apollo dashing in on the Hanher, trying to be very aggressive, but Ganesh is here. We might see um, a pull here. Oh, unfortunately, whips the pull or the stun on Apollo. Um, but again, it is still the early um, lanes. There has not been a kill or an insane swing in terms of XP on either side. Right now, the only level advantage that I see is that there is a level advantage on the junglers as well as a level, a level advantage on the jungler favoring uh, CSU, and a level advantage on the solo laners favoring UW Madison Cardinal. So, yeah. yeah, and there's also a very minor gold lead of about 700 As, gold. Um, this is likely just off of UW Madison Cardinal being able to... Wait, we have Ra coming in here for a gank, it looks like. He's moving in slowly, we'll see if we'll be able to do anything. 
Ganesh has hit 5. Gibra, unfortunately, whiffs the ult, and now he's out of mana. This is going to put him behind his rotations very early, as both of his um, back camps are still up. So he's using XP elsewhere on the map for very little pressure on the mess. That is unfortunate. Um, as Spyrock mentioned, there is a gold lead that's beginning to increase. I suspect that we are seeing that largely from the solo lane, as well as possibly the duo lane at this point. But, um, yeah. If we look at the stats, it is, in fact, the solo lane that is getting most of that gold difference. Um, duo lane also claiming the mid creeps, so we shall see that if later on they extend this lead here. Still no first blood, still waiting on seeing who will be able to pull that out. Persephone, oh my goodness, Persephone's damage early game is incredibly strong, so I would also not be surprised to see the Shangha getting a fair amount of pressure on her. Persephone's early um, game is just a, or early game role is just a lane bully. Shangha, however, does have sustain to counter that, so I'll be interested to see if we get a Divine Ruin on her line early for that Persephone. Uh, it does look like she will be building into that, but... Um, Right now, with the jungler backed, whereas Ra's out here, it looks like Ra will be able to claim a lot of these neutral camps. Persephone ult going just a little bit wide there. Was looking to secure a kill on Shangha since her uh, moonlit waltz was down, but alas, it wasn't meant to be. Um, it looks like there will be a contention over this red buff, with Ra being caught out. Tries to steal it, but it was pulled. Ganesh grabbing the Ra. Zerket coming in and taunting. You see a Ganesh ult come out. Zerket ult down. There's a shell to try and keep the Serket alive. Ra is still in a very upper position. Ra dies, but Cerberus comes through cleaning up the Serket. First Blood going to UW Maps and Cardinal, giving them a little bit of bonus gold, but ultimately a one-for-one -one jungle for jungle. Still very much anyone's game. Does not give a huge advantage to either side. Um... If we look into solo lane, we still see the Guan Yu pressuring out the Bologna a fair amount, keeping her low and under tower. Looks like he will be going for a blue buff invade here, making use of that pressure to get XP lead. However, Ra is in the area. We might see Ra come and contest this. Um, Guan does successfully secure the blue, and Ra does not look like he wants to contest. That's just going to further uh, accentuate this solo lane gap that's already been developing. Um... With a already only 7 minutes in, a 2 level lead in favor of the Guan Yu. This gives the UW Cardinal a lot of a chance to have the Guan rotate in. Bologna ult coming out, as well as the knockdown. Guan still holding on to his ult though, still having a health advantage, and denying the middle scorpion from Bologna. We're seeing pings out on the Bologna. Serket's in the area, might be looking to see if the Bologna steps out to gank. However, Bologna is making the spark call in backing, forcing a... Uh, the um, Serket run by Fishy to back off. The, um, because of the solo lane pressure, though, we might be seeing a push at the right side Greater Scorpion sometime soon. Looks like that left tower may be dying very early in the game. Very wow, it's already down early, at 7. Reasonably fast. Yep. Uh, that, that is indeed a pretty early fall for the solo lane side tower. Um, I know there's been some debates on whether it is better to have that tower up or not um, before 10 minutes. Generally, it is nice to have that tower uh, present uh, to allow you to proxy ways and have them crash into tower before then rotating into uh, another lane. However, I know that's been less prominent in uh, Season 8. We see the Guan Yu and Bowen clashing yet again. However, that doesn't look like it will lead anywhere. More interestingly, we now see the support and mids come together to fight. Shangha under a lot of pressure. Ganesh ult coming out. There goes the Persephone ult. Persephone takes out the Cerberus, but that is Coalition's Persephone. Here we see why she is such a threat, being able to lock down an entire. Um, like Saket's gonna go on the, the middle. Yeah, it looks like Saket's gonna go for that Shangha. Oh, Persephone really is a lane bully, being able to lock down targets such as that. I believe that Persephone there also locked down the target into Ganesha ult, which is even more damaging. Cerberus didn't have escape. Oh, and there's a solo kill in solo lane where we were looking at the mid fight. That's going to give the Guan Yu an even bigger lead, secures some blue buff again, and it looks like off of that, 
off of those two kills, um, UW Cardinals coming out with a lot of early game pressure. It also looks like they might be looking at this um, left side Greater Scorpion. Yeah, and they're currently sitting at just about a 3,000 gold lead. A little less. We're or not actually, you know, any minus, major like, 6,000. Yeah. Oh, 4,000. Okay, I'm screwing up my numbers. Oops. <laughs> No worries, for not taking any major objectives, that's a pretty early gold lead. Oh, and there's a blink on Apollo into the taunt. Apollo had to Aegis, however, this death, or the Death's Kiss, or Last Breath, is that the scrap old name? Comes out and secures the kill here. Um, that will give on her more pressure, and right now, UW Madison has pressure in every lanes, as well as getting their enhanced red and purple buffs online. Um, we might be seeing um, Madison looking for a Gold Fury play sometime soon. Um, despite this early gold lead, 4,000 is a pretty significant gold lead by this point in the game. However, it is not um, impossible to fight back against at all. I'd be slightly more concerned about the XP lane in every everywhere except the jungle right now. It makes Madison have a huge advantage in team fights. But if CFU is able to come out on one team fight, potentially contesting or contesting an objective or even going for a steal, they might be able to pull themselves back into this game very quickly. You see Sukat at the mid camps with the mid lane being poached up. They don't have ward vision on this this left side of the jungle. Or wait, no. Um, CSU does have ward vision on this side of the jungle, so they would have seen the Sukat gang. It looks like instead though they're collapsing on Cerberus on this side, but it wasn't meant to be. Bologna, on the other hand, still getting very pissed out by Guan Yu. It looks like Guan Yu just came out. And push all the way back in tower. Ra is coming to alleviate some of that pressure. However, being a level down, as well as um, using some farm for this, with Guan being large amounts of health, I don't know if it can mean anything. Chang Ah is also rotating. Uh, this could be potentially very dangerous for a real man. However, both miss their abilities, and in the meantime, Red Team has managed to secure the Gold Fury with no contesting. Apollo went to check, but now is caught out in a bit of an awkward position. We'll see if he can get away. I think that was a very big missed opportunity. Oh no, so can't hit the taunt into the death vein, and that's Apollo's second tumble. Being and able to contest or snipe that gold would have made a big difference in that indeed. gold lead. But now we're up to almost 5,000. Yeah, Shangha and uh, Ra's rotation over to solo lane really hurt them, as they were not able to alleviate any pressure or kill the one you nor were they able to um, contest the Gold Fury later on, and that resulted in the right side Greater Scorpion also going the way of UW Madison. So Kat's incredibly low though to the Ra, managed to jump over the wall and get out, but almost to the spill there. Even though there is a very formidable gold lead forming, it's still not unwinnable for CSCU, as shown by their ability to get these burst downs, but as the game goes on, unless they're making a play sometime soon, it's going to be getting harder and harder. Raz is very deep in the enemy jungle right now as well, though, so we might see a collapse on him. But it doesn't look like it was meant to be on her instead just heading back to his enhanced purple. Um, what I'd be expecting coming up next in this game would be for the UW Madison Cardinal team to start looking at other bigger objectives such as uh, Pyromancer and possibly even Fire Giant. And right now with this lead, they are about on um, pretty much everyone going to be a full item up on the post. So this means that they will be wanting to push fights right now while they have this advantage and try and gain further their lead. It looks like over here though, we see the Anher soloing the Apollo. Apollo's Aegis is out. Anher picks up the kill anyways. That's Venom on his Anher with a four level lead in the ADC lane. That's a very hard lead to fight against. Mid lane's also simultaneously being collapsed upon. Ganesh Shulk coming out, and that is a kill onto the serve. Shangha and Ra both trying to play defensive and be back, but they aren't going to be able to get anything. And it looks like UW Cardinal is going to be looking at this Pyromancer. At this point in the game, if you take a look at the level gaps we're seeing start to form, they are very worrying for CSU. Oh, Chang Ha is now being silenced by the Ganesh. Persephone and Ganesh chasing her down. 
and Persephone picks up that kill, securing herself a killing spree. That is collision on the Persephone. Bologna is trying to come in, but she's under leveled, being the same level of support, not able to get anything, and there is a double kill. And that will be converted into a Pyromancer here. Or even a fire? They're going for the full fire giant call at this point. This is an interesting call. Yeah, they must call. think uh, the Guan heals are going to be enough, and Anhu is also over there. Yeah, they've Looking full rotated as little well as well as this thing. Yeah. This call is a little worrying just because of the health of their tanks, as well as the fact that it's so early, but they, since they had those kills, they were able to secure it without being contested, and then go straight to Pyromancer. And it looked like CSU were not even aware of them, that option, slash didn't have any way to contest it. They are then going to pick up the Greater Scorpion from the um, CSU side, and that has pushed this into a almost 10k gold lead, already 9k. That is a very hard to contest, with all members of UW Madison Cardinal having at least a full item on the opposing team when they have that, um, when they go back and spend this gold. This is a very hard, um, lead to fight against, especially if you take into consideration the level gaps in each of the lanes. There's one level on the support, on, or there's two levels on the support, four levels on the mid, four, five whole levels on the ADC, um, four levels in the, uh, solo, with only a two level difference in favor of CSCU for the jungle. Which is to be expected as Serket does play a much more supporting role as a jungler instead of hyper farming. Those are a very hard, that's a very large level lead with abilities dealing much more damage for the side of UW Madison. Fighting against that would be very difficult. And it looks like UW Madison wants to use this fire giant buff they acquired to try and push down this left lane and get a tier 2 under their belt. Um, right now, it looks like. Um, they will get that uncontested, with most of CSU being either in mid or right side, trying to get the Serket who was caught out. However, Fische is able to get away with his life, while UW Madison is now looking at taking the Phoenix. Apollo is backing as well as Cerberus and Chong Ha collapsing, but I don't think it will be fast enough, and the left Phoenix goes down. CSU's base has been cracked. They are turning on the Chong Ha now. Chong Ha gets melted. Cerberus is next. They... Also gets melted for a double kill for Venom on the on her, and now they're looking at mid Phoenix, or uh, mid tier two, and then likely mid Phoenix to try and wrap this up. This gold lane has now extended to 12k as well. It's going to take a miracle of a team fight for CSU to come back at this point. Apollo goes down to the Guan Yu. Bologna locked down by Persephone. Ult. Persephone picks up the kill, then on her jumps in, gets the Ra knocked up. Stunned by Guan Yu, and Ra goes down to Venom on the um, on her. This is looking like a very rough game for CSU to even have a chance of coming back. You see that Mid Phoenix will go down. Serb is diving, trying to see if he can get anything on the Serpent, but he has left Shangha alone by doing so. Who gets collapsed upon and dies. Serb goes down as well, and that will be UW Madison will be now looking for an end here. It seems. I am already at half health, Paul is going to go in and see if he can do anything. Fish is mighty low, but manages to get out while Apollo is still being focused. That's a triple kill for Venom on the on her now. He might be looking for the Quadra, focusing Bologna. He picked up the Quadra, and there is the end. That is a 17 minute game in advantage of UW Madison Cardinal. And you have to be wondering what the CSU team is thinking going into the second game. You weren't wrong at the beginning when you uh, you predicted that those Guan heals were going to be big. If you took a look uh, while they were continuous, CSU was continuously pushing in. Guan was just healing all of his back line. Indeed. Um, if we look at that player healing stat, despite there being a Shang Ha and a Ra on the field, each getting 367 and 368, Guan Yu's heal, even with a Cerberus in the game, is all the way at 4,323. He got much more value out of that heal than these two healers did, and unfortunately it made for a very difficult game to fight against, with a lead forming every lane. However, the real standout player here has to be the Venom on Anher with a 903 scoreline. That is insane numbers. The only kill was picked up on the Serket by Cerberus, which didn't even give that much of an advantage to CSU. That is just a very rough game, and it's very hard on players' mentals, I imagine.
Um. Now we are just waiting on the uh, lobby to be reformed and yeah, the next map to start or match round. Yes. This is a best of three, as was alluded to, and with the first game going to UW Mass and Cardinal, this next game will be make or break for CSC to see if they can bring it back. Um. In terms of picks and bans, I'm wondering if we will. I'm willing to bet that we will see the Persephone banned out in this coming game. She has um, an incredibly high KDA, matching the Ganesh here, as well as just a very oppressive ultimate. And Collision showed that he knows how to play her, and as well as how to take advantage of her benefits. So I would not be surprised to see her banned out coming up. Fair bans for CSU's side would probably be um, any of the picks, Persephone on her. Uh, having those two players on very comfortable gods seems to be a downfall. Yeah, I'd say banning out either of those would probably be wise. However, despite these two having stellar scorelines, it's important to not undersell how uh, much the other team members did as well. There's large structure damage across the board, um, Sirket, despite having a somewhat lower damage number than the other carries for the team, was able to get in there and lock down targets with that last breath ultimate, securing multiple kills, as well as the taunt being a great engage. The Ganesh ult was able to, although we're not able to see stats for how many kills were gifted, I would be willing to bet Ganesh picked up one or two kills throughout that game and gifted them over. In general, it's just a very scary comp um, to fight, and they're going to have to pick what they pan out. Yeah, and I would say um, if CSU does not ban out like a Kukulan, um, I'm I'm guessing that Rerum will go for it as it's very very strong right now. Um, otherwise, Guan Yu is also very very powerful, particularly with those heals. As yeah. we kind of saw in those last few fights, um, they could just keep on pushing. Um, I I forget if they backed even after the fire giant and just kept on pushing and having themselves healed. They backed after the Fire Giant for the gold, I believe, but after that they were able to siege both Tier 2s and Phoenixes and get many kills without even being low. The 4,323 healing number speaks for itself. Guan is a, another ban target that would be fair. However, you have to come to the point and worry if that I think that no matter what they ban out, it's going to be difficult for CSU because at this point for this game, it looks like they were just a little bit outplayed, and you can only ban so many gods. I think that CSU needs to come in with a different composition with clear heads and change up their strategy a bit if they want to take on this team. From the looks of it, we can start spectating the picks and bans for round two. All right, yep. thank you. Sorry, I was not paying attention to that. Not invite, spectate. There we go. All right. Well... Anyways, we will see what adjustments are made by both teams. UW Madison Cardinal has to be happy. Oh, and we're straight into it. We see for bands, we see most of the same bands coming up from CSU with Persephone instead of the Arachne. And otherwise, I think it's the same. Here we see the Shangha and Ra banned out from UW Madison, but otherwise their bands are kept the same, as well as Thanatos getting banned. And we see that we have, again, a double mage comp from CSU. How do you guys feel about seeing this happen again? From the looks of it, uh, Poseidon will probably take the jungle. Um, I feel like he's a much faster jungler. Uh, probably the same uh, ideas of staying up in levels with a mage and chunking lots of damage. It'll be interesting to see how the jungle oh. actually... Or helps carry it along with the other lanes. Yeah, I'm interested to see. It seems like there was an issue with the match. I don't know if it timed out or what, but um, it seems that they are no longer in a match lobby. I wonder what was wrong. Um, anyways, we'll be watching for that and seeing if we can get back in quickly. However, I will say this. I would be a... I, Although the Mage Jungle honestly probably worked out the strongest of all the lanes, I'm still a little bit uncertain about this somewhat unconventional composition as it struggled to prove its value in the first game. 
I would yeah, prefer to see a more it's like, uh, version. as Venom says in the chat, Gator DC'd, um, so that broke the, the matchmaking there, so they're gonna have to retry and doing that. Ooh, that's unfortunate. Um, we'll probably see a remake any minute now with same pick spans, I would guess, but, um, yeah, I don't know, um, going into this next game, I think we're going to need to see, it seems that, um, UW Madison got a lot of solid picks through from what I saw again, getting both the Morgan, who is a very prominent threat, as well as the Raven and Jungle, both of which are very scary gods to go up against right now, with a Bruiser Robin just being able to get in and deal massive amounts of damage, and Morgan being able to utilize the ultimates of both their team and the enemy team to wreak havoc. So, we will see if the adjustment will be made by CSU in this next game, but yeah. Let's see if the match is back up yet. Does not appear to be. Alright. Um, I, I think that this game will come down more likely to the play of each individual rather than the picks and bans here, because honestly, in the first game, the UW Madison was grouping just better than CSU and were able to rotate and secure objectives faster, as well as just getting picks where they needed to. Outside of that first kill um, that was traded, um, CSU was unable to get much pressure off the map and fell behind a lot of levels in every lane. So I just think that we need to see a more pressure start from them where they're able to contest UW-Madison um, through the early game, get to the mid game, and then actually fight as five around these objectives without having a huge deficit coming out of lane already. So... Seems that the match still has not been made, but Gator108 is back online, so... We shall see how, um, when this comes back. Well, this is always the fun of playing custom games. Yeah. Small DCs. At least That's it wasn't mid-game. Yeah. We, we can be thankful for that, for sure. Um, in the case of a mid-game DC, do we know what the rules on that are? Is it a remake, or do they give it to the team that's at an advantage? I believe it's a, as simple as a pause, isn't it? I think it's a pause. Um, I'm oh, fairly really sure you get like infinite time, whereas in like, an actual ranked game, it has like a timer on it. But in custom, I think you might be able to last as long as you um are you able to i mean and you then, can do uh, an infinite time pause but i imagine that at a certain point the opponent team is able to accept if the other player isn't coming back i assume at a certain point Spe that... specifically based on um each tournament's rules that would be yeah, they probably yeah. have it set to an infinite timer um because i don't believe the game allows as long of a timer as the tournament but yeah. i believe that along with tournament rules if you are dc'd too long. Um, it either just you either play through the game or forfeit yeah. your round. Yep. Yeah, well, here is hoping that um, we don't have too many more internet issues here um, coming into this second game. It doesn't seem like the match has been made yet, so I am curious if there are more technical difficulties happening or if it's just taking a while for the lobby to get set up. But we shall see. Mm -hmm. um, of what we saw from that last game, what would you say, what, in general, each lane was able to get a fairly solid level advantage. How would you say that um, CSU would be, what should CSU be looking at to keep that down? And what should UW Madison be trying to replicate there from that game in terms of just how their start went? Because I think after that start, it, the game was very much a snowball into UW Madison's favor. 
It sure seemed that way. Um, if UW Madison still keeps a level difference and gold difference uh, going into this match um, over CSU's lanes, it's definitely going to be important that they try to steal or prevent a large objectives from being taken, as they really did, uh, metaphorically speaking, put a nail in the coffin to end yeah. that game. For sure. Um, we are back into this game too now. Um, we can see that both the Guan Yu, we saw the Guan Yu has gotten through again for UW Madison for Rearum. It seems like it is going to be a repeat matchup of Guan Yu versus Barona at this point, which I would be a little nervous about. Um, last time the Barona struggled to make or to gain pressure against the Guan Yu in lane, and Guan Yu is just such a dominant god in solo lane right now, as well with his team healing that I'd be a little nervous. Um, Speaking of team healing, that does also seem to be a theme for UW Madison's team as a whole. They have both Guan Yu heal, Cupid heals, as well as Sylvanas heals, all which will keep them sustained and in the fight. So I'm expecting to see a good amount of anti heal out of um, CSU side. Conversely, CSU does have still a, one of the most prominent mid laners right now, being able to take large advantage of the Archmage's gem, as well as having um, both. Ymir and Heimler, a very powerful duo lane, and Ymir especially has a decent matchup into um, Madison's team, being able to wall off a lot of the enemy's team's escapes, both with Morgan, Guan Yu, Cupid, it, and Cupid, as well as Sylvanas, not having a way to get around his walls, with not being able to get out with his school. So I'm going to be interested to see if we, to see if the Ymir is able to make any strong play. Uh, yeah. For CSU's uh, side, hopefully they can uh, make this dual mage game work. It'd yeah. be a nice shakeup to regular comps. Yeah. Uh, again, the one worry I do have about a potential Poseidon jungle is although he does have the mobility as a jungler um, to get around, and he has been seen as a jungle in the past with a decent secure and stuff, he lacks the same get-in-your-face burst damage that a lot of other assassins have and does not have the option to build really bruisery. So I expect we'll be seeing his ability to dive into the backline of a teamfight is much more limited than, say, a Robin who can build bruiser very comfortably and go in and disrupt the enemy AC of rage. So um, we'll see how they work around that or if the Morgan and uh, Cupid will be able to sit in the back lane or sit um as in the back line pretty uncontested again um, anyways it seems that the three minute delay is up and we should be getting into the game shortly One thing I will be interested to see is I do want to see what starter is picked up by this Bologna this time. Because Bologna can run both Warrior's Axe and Mannequins in solo lane. Last time we saw her pick up Mannequins, which... Or not, I believe she did Warriors. Although it's a decent item, um, at least from my knowledge of solo lane, correct me if I'm wrong, Spyro, um, gives much less pressure. Absolutely. Yeah, mannequins can be um, quite a bit of damage early on when you don't uh, really have a lot of uh, physical protections. Um, and it just does a lot of damage and stops you from really auto-attacking, which you have to really do in the very early stages of the game. And mm -hmm. it definitely gives a lot of pressure. Um, I was a little surprised with the Warrior Axe pick. It does uh, get a really good upgrade on this um, Sundering Axe. Where when you hit someone, you take 15% of their health away um, as true damage on like a 7 second cooldown or something like that. So sure. it's really good and gives a lot of protections and tankiness. Yeah. I'll be interested to see if they um, switch to um, mannequins or if they still think that Warrior's Axe is the correct play here. Um, Either way, I would imagine that they're hoping that something different will go down in this lane because they picked the Valona back into Guan Yu despite that having a rough start last time. 
I would not be surprised to see the jungle um, path over there early and try and make an influence in the solo lane to get Bologna up and running as well. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it, you have to be a little bit scared of Riram being able to use that Guan Yu um, and getting a solid lead again, which gave just entirely pressure on the solo lane side to UW Madison Cardinal. When it comes to dual lane, it's it's going to be an interesting fight between the Giants. Uh, Ymir and Sylvanas each having a lot of hard CC. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun to see uh, who can hit their abilities first and stall the other out. For sure. Both of these solo laners have, um, they, or both of these supports rather, have aggressive abilities um, and hard CCs that could set up for uh, early kill very easily if the other team isn't. Um, ready either in the form of a root pull from Sylvanas or a freeze into wall from Ymir. So I would not be surprised if we see first plug coming from the duo lane side this game. We should be in here shortly. Um, Um, how do you feel about Cupid into Heimdler as a matchup, though, as well? Because we saw that the Apollo into uh, on her matchup was um, going down his way later into that game, and Venom was just able to take advantage of a one level lead and extend it. Do you think with the Heimdler being such a safe pick that we will see the dual lane stay a bit more even as the supports rotate out to mid lane? As the supports rotate out, I think we can expect um, Heimdaller to maybe play aggressive and quickly teleport out or uh, play back and teleport in. Uh, definitely using those crystals to take advantage of Cupid. Though yeah. you do have to watch out for Cupid's dash, um, which can easily be used to mitigate those movements. Yeah. Um, just a quick fact check. Do we know if um, Cupid's cripple ultimate locks down Heimdaller from entering his portals? Or his Bifrost? I believe it does, but I'm not 100% certain on that. I would not know that one. It's not often that I see these two gods picked against each other. Yeah. I am at, I feel like this is definitely something I should know. I, um, To my knowledge, I am pretty certain that a cripple can keep Heimdler out of his Bifrost, but I'm not 100% on that. If that is the case, it makes it so that Cupid has a very valuable tool in his ultimate to lock down Heimdler and kind of force him to beats out, or otherwise he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Um, yeah. Um, Morgan, as well, has several powerful ults to take advantage of. The main ults I'd be looking at are the Kraken and Scylla's I'm a Monster, both extremely powerful ultimates. She also has a very safe transform into Guan Yu to get away slash engage with some bulk. As well as Sylvanas, if she, um, she really wants to get tanked. So I'd be, I'm going to be interested to see what transform collision is going to be looking at most of this game, and see how it switches up based on how the game continues to go. Taking a look at time, I don't know if there's a spectator glitch. I don't um, know It either. seems that we're running beyond the three minutes. I believe we are. I am not certain why that would be happening. Um, maybe I need to restart my smite client here. Um, and try it from there. I'm sorry for the issue. Um, I think I'm going to restart it real quick and see if I can resolve this um, problem. I did think that was running a little bit longer than three minutes, though, for sure. I don't know why that was problematic. Um, so the stream should be back shortly, hopefully, and um, we're going to try and get this issue resolved quickly.
All right, I am booting it up and getting it captured. So hopefully we will have the game back up shortly. Sorry for the technical difficulties again. I am not certain what exactly went wrong there, but hopefully we will be able to get back into it quickly. Um, has, um, can you guys check the stream to make sure that the capture is, uh, actually working? Um, I'm only seeing a black screen right now. Hmm. Okay. We'll give it a second and see if it fixes. Um, what about now? Still having problems? Alright, we should be good now. I think it should be fixed. Yep, it's up now. Perfect. Um, let's try and get back into this game, shall we? Spectate. Alright. And I should be able to start spectate now. Okay, and now we are in. Sorry about that difficulty. I don't know what went wrong. I'm assuming it's on my end, but that is unfortunate nevertheless. We are here now, and we shall get into the game. Alright. And as everyone is loading in here, we shall see how this second match for the set, if UW Madison Card the Cardinal can pull it out. We shall see how it goes. And it appears everyone is loaded in. Um, we see Leather Cowl out of the um, Heimdler immediately. Interesting. And we see the, at the hero's axe start from Bologna again. Um, I feel like I would have preferred to see mannequins here to try and press a bit more pressure, but the sustain from Hero's Axe is definitely nice. And then Poseidon uh, looks to be going jungle again as well. So. The Warrior's Axe gives um, 25 health um, on an ability hit every 7 seconds, I believe, so it is a little bit of sustain, but it's mm -hmm. not going to be anywhere as near as like uh, the Guan Yu, and he also has a Warrior's Axe. That's Personally, true. I found that mannequins it just gives you a little bit of extra pressure, and you can be very kind of dangerous very early on. Yeah. Get those autos in. We'll see if Buddy Boy can make that Warrior's Axe work, or if he will be struggling once again versus the uh, Guan Yu being managed by the year. Um, once again, it looks like we're going to be seeing standard starts with the solo and jungle going from yellow to through the back camps to blue with the ADC and mids on red and the support starting purple by themselves. So we will see who gets that early pressure. It looks like Morgan beat the wave clearer or beat Silatolin just by a little bit, so that should give a little bit of early pressure to her. However, Sil's clear is not to be messed with either. Incredibly strong. Yeah, so Morgan gets that early lane or wave pressure and is going to the left side camps. Watch up I'm honestly most interested to see is how the dual lane goes here. Heimdler being dashed in on by Cupid very early, being put down to about a third of his health. That's very worrying. This mid lane matchup, the Robin and Morgan do manage to secure their right side XP camps here with um Gaining that slight XP lead on CSU once more. Um, it looks like Collision on Morgan is looking for stun. There's a blink from Robin. Unfortunately, it doesn't result in anything. And oh, in the time we were looking at that, Venom manages to get the early kill on the Heimdler. That is very detrimental towards CSU's chances this game. 
with uh, both the combo of Venom and Gator being able to put on a ton of early pressure with the Cupid Sylvanas, and being able to exploit the um, Heimzor and Ymir for that early kill. And I expect we'll see that transition into a lot of pressure on this left side lane for the early game. Robin early looking for an invade on the Poseidon. This secure is better than the Poseidon, so he should be able to get some of those creeps. But he's not happy with that. He's going after the Poseidon, chasing him. Pushes him back, and now gets to take his back camps. Or the remainders of his back camps. Again, not the start you want to see if you're rooting for CSU, but for UW Madison Cardinal, this is a, a, looking like a repeat of last game with a very solid start and a much earlier first blood than last time. Um, looks like Poseidon will be heading over to the Oracles, trying to get that vision up for the Greater Scorpion early. However, we see once again in solo lane, the Guan Yu pulling ahead already with a level advantage and Bologna at 1 health, having to back. It looks like every lane has pressure right now for UW Madison Cardinal. It's being played fantastically by these boys, and we'll have to see if CSU has what it takes to come back from this early deficit with already a 1k gold lead forming by the 3 minute mark. Um, we see both Ravin and Guan Yu grouped here. They might be looking for a gank on the solo lane, um, pushing into the Bologna. They might be looking for the either the blue buffs to gear, and they get the blue... Oh no, the blue buff was secured by Bologna, but will she get out with her life? Guan Yu's in his ult, got the stun, and it looks like there will be the kill choices of Ravin. Fish A making his presence known on the map this game immediately. Unfortunately, the... For UW Madison, they did not manage to secure the blue buff, but securing the kill is arguably just as good. And then Fishay will be able to claim the back camps once more and keep up a level advantage despite having to miss some of his own farm for that game. Um, Morgan is also being able to secure. They're securing both of the mid camps, which again, even more farm for UW Madison, just being able to um, work around the map very effectively right now. Robin is covering the dash back from Scylla, but instead turns on Poseidon, roots him, there comes the Kraken out, Robin damage immunes through it, and it's a kill for Collision on the Morgan, gets the stun on Scylla, forcing her back, Scylla is out of mana, and is going to be forced to retreat there. Once again, mid laner coming up with a level lead very early in the game, and the gold lead has now expanded to almost 2,000. Venom, on the other hand, is getting a little bit pressured out by the dual lane, getting frozen by Ymir with Heimdall chasing him down. However, he's still turning and fighting, actually. There is the dash, and he is into a, into tower and safe once more. Unless um, CSU manages to pick up kills, this looks like it's going to be a very rough game for them to start making any leeway. And with another solo kill coming out from Rearum, Looks like he just barely dived tower and was able to pick it up, and is now looking to see what else he can get on the map. The mid tower or the solo tower, almost about to fall again. Once again, well before the 10 minute mark. Again, this is giving me deja vu of the last game. Um, what do you guys th think of this right now? Um, unfortunately, we don't have a. Oh, a <laughs> I'm trolling you guys. Oh my no, god, so I just realized. Uh... Why didn't you guys tell me earlier? Oh, that's sad. Okay, we didn't want to interrupt you, but um, okay. I definitely think um, I'm so sorry. There's a substantial difference in solo lane right now. Um, a little unfortunate for CSU. Um, they may be able to get back if they get some good rotations off of um, the Poseidon or some something like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's never too late to quit, but sometimes it's rough to get back. Um, Guan Yu can be quite oppressive. He gets very tanky and but still does a lot of damage. Um, oh, and in that, time that tower time. down so quickly is kind of rough um, for Bologna, but it may lead to maybe an overextension by Rimrum um, to get a kill or something like that. Which and as you just said, will. that exa was exactly what happened. Poseidon managed to pick up a kill on Rira. Once again, I'm so sorry about that. I completely forgot that I needed to restart my stream to you guys so you could be able to uh, spectate as well. My bad. Um, looks like we're going to see a collapse on the dual lane by four members of UW Madison. Heimglor goes down very quickly to Collision. 
And there we go. Not satisfied yet. Looking for the Ymir. He gets three man trees though that might save his life. Robin and Dorgan going in as Robin. We'll see if there's enough. It does not look like they'll be able to secure the kill though. Wait, Morgan back in tower, goes in, manages to get the kill, collision on the Morgan, making a huge play, but dies to the tower. No one gets credit, but Scylla is there now, going in with I'm a monster, picks up Venom, but unfortunately not able to get the second charge off. Heimdler here, though, looking to pick up Fische, but Fische might be able to get out, damage immune through that, and Heimdler picks up the kill on Fische. I liked where UW Madison was going with that four-man rotate, but unfortunately, by waiting around for the Emir for so long, trying to get that kill, although they did eventually get it, they did lose pressure elsewhere and gave up a few kills. Um, that is the sort of opportunity that um, that uh, CSU needs to be looking for. Oh, it seems like we might have a game pause here. Um, I'm not certain. Does it look like it? I'm looking at the Bologna back. They're holding the the timer stopped. It's a game pause. I'm gonna try and speed up. I noticed second. that Gator was kind of he was over the the dual lane fight, but just kind of left. I don't know if he DC'd and was just like walking into a wall or something. Yeah, um, it's possible. And we see oh, Gator has DC'd again. Yeah. yeah, that must have been it. Because I was wondering why he wasn't in there, kind of helping them. Yeah, I wonder if that played in at all to Madison's difficulty in that fight, since he was not able to contribute, but... Um, we're back in the game now, uh, passes and passes, and both teams are going to be looking to see what they can gain off this map now in this state. Um, a three-level me me yeah, sorry, a three-level lead already in mid lane has developed, which is very scary. However, Scylla, still being Scylla, able to do a half health to Morgan just off hitting the Sikkim into the crush. But, I don't know, we shall see if um, CSU has shown some signs of life by being able to pick up kills still, but Madison still in a very commanding position with all of their players still farming the map and rotating very aggressively or efficiently. Scylla looks like she's being collapsed upon as well, stunned by the Robin, stunned by the Scylla, and dead, or stunned by the Morgan, and dead to the Morgan, just like that. Madison might be looking for more. They're going to the um, left side's greater scorpion here. Again, trying to get those enhanced plus online early to further their lead and taking the first um, neutral objective on the map. Um, meanwhile, there might be a play on Rearum in the solo lane with Bologna padding very high and Poseidon also being in the area. From the looks of it, Bologna's just taking Totem. Yeah. Um, the interesting point is going to be if Guan Yu catches her off guard. Yeah, it seems that Guan Yu did see her and is dashing after her, trying to press her out for that decision. Robin and Sylvanas also making their way over. We shall see if a play is coming. They might just end up deciding to go for this right side grid Scorpion though, and try to expand their lead even further. And it looks like that's exactly what they want. Guan Yu keeping Bologna pushed under tower so she can't even contest and Poseidon having to worry about going over there and helping. Um, if we also look at ward vision right now, we can see that UW Madison Cardinals wards are much more aggressively placed, meaning they're able to monitor the movement of the enemy right now much better than um, CSU can and are able to go for these things, such as the blue buff. Um, with... The um, Poseidon nowhere to be seen, Fish A on the Robin, able to easily get that blue buff secure and push his guns in fervor. He did miss the secure, in fact, but he pushed the Bologna off so she no, couldn't pick up. No, got the secure. Right? Got it. Oh. Um, Venom solos um, the duo, and then he gets a double kill in the duo. Fish A then catches the Scylla with Robin ult. I'm, at, I'm sad I missed the ADC. Um, the double kill by Venom 2v1, but this looks in that advantage. Robin being a little caught out by Bologna, damage immune through the hammer. Um, we'll see if the Bologna has to follow through to get him, but right now, and Robin's out of mana, so it's rough. Guan Yu links in, pushes Bologna off, forces the thorns, and it looks like Robin will be getting away with his life this time. And simultaneously, UW Madison securing that goal through. Gator almost going down, but knows his damage numbers and was just fine. It's 
already up to a 6k gold lead by the 11 minute mark. This is a very hard um, lead to fight against. I don't know if we're going to be seeing um, a comeback quite at this point, unless there is an amazing steal at such a uh, fire giant fight or something to that effect. looks a bit a big team fight among mid lane and uh fire giant and pyro are coming out here indeed we see balona ult and kraken come out but without landing on their appropriate targets i'm going in and getting the ult onto the um rather, or onto the sills but unfortunately in the meantime the balona goes down and then they collapse on the heimdler who was waiting for sylvanas to come back down um UW Madison gets two kills there, and it looks like they're making their way over to Pyromancer. Um, I don't expect we'll be seeing the same early FG call this time just because of the enemy team being in the vicinity, but they might be looking to go back in and fight more, with, as you guys were mentioning earlier, the big team heals allowing them to not have to back after that fight. And it does seem like uh, Ymir is the only one with anti-heal right now, so... Um, and his Pestilence is, is a good item, and just he needs to be in there and fighting. And if they disengage, then they have their full healing. Um, oh, you're right. The Scylla picked up first item death, too. though. Not Divine. UW Madison also going for the Fire Giant. They managed to out-secure the Kraken. I don't know how that one happened, but... um. They do manage to secure the Fire Giant there, and that's very dangerous for CSU here. Looks like Madison are playing a little slowly, trying to bait CSU into a bad fight, but they're, they seem more than content to just back with their Fire Giant, as seen by Fish A already going back to the fountain to heal up. Um, oh, Morgan and Cupid go around, burst Scylla down in a split second, Venom getting kill credit, the ultimate goes down. Bologna tries to jump in, but is getting melted by the Guan Yu and Cupid. Goes to a double kill to Venom. Ymir coming back around aggressively. Gonna get dashed on and gives Venom the triple kill. While simultaneously, Fische is um, fighting the Heimdler. Gets ulted away. Heimdler's trying to run. So we might see that unusually, but Heimdler was unable to back in time to defend the Phoenix, with Fische continuing the chase to allow his team to get this uncontested. Poseidon seems to be split pushing for the tier 1 power, but I don't think that's worth it. Using the mid phoenix and CSU's base is cracked open once more. Um, with those fire giant- or with the fire minions now pushing down middle lane, um, CSU is going to have a very difficult task to try and defend, whereas UW Madison now has the opportunity to wait for this um, upcoming Fury to respawn and take it while um, CSU has to deal with the pressure they're getting passively from mid lane. Um, Raven out here is securing Oracle, so they make sure they have vision of it, um, as well as clearing out the ward with a control ward of his own. However, he's pretty deep into enemy territory. Catches the Poseidon going on him, does huge amounts of damage. Fishe gets the kill. He's now on a killing spree here. Um, Ymir with a big double freeze, being able to put in some pressure. Cracking slightly off the mark, but Fishe gets the double. He gets the triple with the ult. He's going to be looking for the quadra. Venom takes it, however, though, with his ultimate. And off of that, I think UW Madison is going to be looking for an end with all five of their members up with fire with only a lone Heimdler able to defend. Um, and just like that, they are looking at the end. Heimdler being aggressed, ties to collision, and that looks like it's gonna be game set and match. With Tainori at half, Bologna doing what she can, jumping in with the ult, trying to get a big stun off. Ymir coming out, they're going to have to focus down the Cupid. They pick up the kill on both the Cupid and the Morgan, they might get out of this one alive for a bit. Cupid's still going on the offensive though, trying to fight in. Gets the double kill with a huge stun heart bomb. And with Robin and Cupid still here, as well as Sylvanas the tank, 
they're going to still look at this end, and I don't know what Poseidon and Ymir can do. They have to focus down the Cupid, which they are, to their credit, and with Hangler and um, already back up, they were able to kill the Sylvanas, and now UW Madison's in dangerous territory where they're overextending and going to allow um, CSU to get back in the fight. Venom is still alive for the moment, but being pursued very quickly. He might look to turn and fight, though. His damage is still much higher. Robin's here as well. The ult goes down. The Ymir damage is not enough. Robin now on Ymir, bursting him down. Robin goes in with the dunk. Fish A with the big plays gets the kill on the Ymir, saving his colleague. And this fight is still going on. They're now turning their eyes to Arkhangler, but it looks like both are contended at this point to just back off, wait for their team to respawn, maybe look for the Fire Giant, and then go for that end. Yeah, so um, what I think was the, the main problem in that attack of the Titan there um, was the massive amount of damage that the Titan does. Uh, because it's so early, you might not have all of your protections in place. And it, it does a ton of damage. Um, and it has a lot of protections now, I believe, because there's uh, the two tier two towers that one of them just going down. So true. it had a lot of protection and did a ton of damage. And it was just too much, and the team coming back, or CSU, at an opportune time to get a few kills. Yeah, that is exactly what happened. The Titan gains defense based on how many towers are still left up, with only with two tier twos still up and only one mid taken down. It was very rough, especially considering the fact that the ADCs don't have their or keep it doesn't have its full damage output yet as well as just the fact that the respawn times are low. However, they're looking to crack the base again, Collision getting a pick on the Scylla. They seem to be looking at this left Phoenix. Cupid throwing down the ult to lock down Ymir. He goes to a triple for the Morgan. Zach or Collision might be looking for more. Gets the Quadra! He's gonna be looking for that Pentakill. Sprint comes out. They're looking for it. He's going for it. He might be popping the one here. Science trying to run, trying to prevent it. There it is! Collision with the Pentakill! And that's going to be game here. He gets the double penta reset off of the Bologna. This man's insane. He's going to get the Titan low here, and they are happy to end. Still so not even able to get ult off. A double penta reset. Wow. That is a rough game for uh, CSU to go down to. 32 to 6, and it's an 18 minute game, ending with a 14,000 gold lead. And with that, um, UW Madison will take the set, and they will now, I believe, have a 3-0 undefeated record in this ISU um, Invitational Tournament. Um, I found it surprising how uh, Madison did decide to fight at left Phoenix, but yet didn't put any pressure on Phoenix itself, instead going to capitalize on player levels and killing the enemy team to then take what was left of Titan Cell. Indeed. Generally, I would, in those sort of situations, you want to have your ADC hard focusing the objective to get it, or the um, power to get it burned down as fast as possible, but it seems that UW Madison were aware of the lead they had and figured it would be safer to instead just get the kills on the enemy and um, work from there. And with that, they were able to pick up both wins and the set got closed out. What a game. Um, so, I believe that will do it for our Smite stream tonight. Um, UW Madison taking it 2-0 over CSU um, in um, two very strong performances by them. Um, CSU was one of the teams they said they were more confident against playing. Um, so we'll see in future matches against teams that are a little more um, well known for being particularly strong in Smite, how they will hold up. But right now, I'd say all of their players had an incredibly strong showing, and um, their odds of going far in this tournament look pretty um, good. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, henceforth, we just have to keep an eye out and see how they do. Alright. Sounds good. So. Anyways, I think for tonight, that will be it for the stream. Uh, thank you for joining me, both um, Spyrock and Stealthy Spider. Um, and yeah, I look forward to seeing where uh, UW Madison Cardinal 
goes from here and how far they'll be able to make it. All right. Um, yeah, see you guys later. Fun.